I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm gonna make a simple writing desk. We're back up here in my boy's bedroom. We've done a bunch of projects up here, some bunk beds, a closet, a climbing wall, a dresser, and one of the last things to do is to make each one of them a desk. So we're gonna make three desks exactly the same and we're gonna carry over a feature from the dresser that I did before. I wanna take those cherry drawer fronts and make them a lot smaller and put them in the desks. Let's do it. Now it's time to start breaking down the materials for this desk. I designed it so that you could get an entire desk out of less than one sheet of plywood, and that's good because I have to make three desks. So we're gonna start breaking down a full sheet into a couple of panels, ripping some strips, and then we'll cut those down to the final length. I did turn this design into a set of plans, so if you wanna make one of these, you can go check out the link. I've got all the pieces cut down to the rough dimensions and now I'm gonna take the sides of the long top and bottom and the two side pieces and add 45 degree miters to them so that the box will have mitered corners. This absolutely is not necessary, but it will make it look a little bit better because you won't see any of the exposed plies on the outside of the box. All the panels are ready. Next is the leg assemblies. These are gonna be made out of two strips of plywood glued together. And since I have to make two sets of legs for each desk and three desks, I need to make six of each piece. So we're gonna batch those out on the miter saw. I'm gonna set up a stop block and an angle and cut all six pieces before moving on to the next piece. I think I've got everything cut now. I did adjust the angle of this a little bit, so I may have some trimming to do. Um, I'm gonna piece together one of the side leg assemblies just to see how things fit and see what needs to change before I start gluing anything together. I've got the assemblies laid out, and basically this is two layers here. The outer layer, which has fewer pieces, so there won't be as many seams, and then the inner layer, which ends up being short, and that's because the box that is the desk is actually gonna be sitting inside here on top of the inner layer. So this is gonna act as a support for the box itself. I've got all these pieces fit together, so now I've just gotta go back and add a lot of glue and some brad nails to hold them together. This leg assembly is gonna be really strong. I've got two pieces of three quarter inch plywood glued together. That's gonna end up being a nice beefy base for this desk. The rest of these pieces are gonna be doubled up and the glue should hold them together really well. This piece is not gonna be doubled up, so it's just gonna be the glue joint here and here until the side panel gets put on. So, to secure that a little bit more, we're gonna put a pocket hole here and here to drive a screw up into the bottom of this piece in two places. I've got all the pocket holes put in, so now it's time to start putting together these frames. And the only thing I really have to be aware of here is that there are two different sides. These are facing different directions for the inside of the legs, so when I lay them down, I just have to make sure to lay in the right direction. Now I'm gonna drive in the pocket screws on the bottom layer and then just add glue before sandwiching the other pieces on top. And then I'm gonna use some brad nails from the inside surface to hold everything together while it dries. Next up, it's time to build the big boxes for the desk out of these panels that we cut down. Now, it's really important when you're putting together mitered cuts this long to make sure that your saw is really dialed in. It's totally worthwhile to take the time to get the blade at 45 degrees exactly so that this part will be easier to do. When you're putting on the glue on these, it's also really important to use a lot and to make sure that it is fully to the edge of the piece. The glue will help fill in a little bit of the gap between the outside corners of these pieces when they go together. 
I'm gonna set these pieces together and to hold them in place, I'm gonna use this corner clamp. It lets you hold two pieces at 90 degrees to each other and it takes a little bit of work to get them to line up and locked into place when you're doing it, but once you get them there, they should hold the pieces exactly where they need to be while the glue dries. After the first three sides dried together, I took off those clamps and added the fourth side using glue in the same way. And after all four sides were glued together, then it was time to pull it out of the clamps. So here I am with this one completed and it's time to put in a divider down here in the center. That's gonna section off an area to put in a drawer. And I'm gonna use another piece of plywood for that, put in some glue, slide it in place, and drive in some brad nails on the top and the bottom just to hold it there while the glue dries. You often see this with plywood, but these two pieces are actually bowed and they're bowed in different directions. So the center section right here is a lot wider than the outside edges. That's where I need to put my divider so what I cut doesn't fit in here. If I put just glue and brad nails, eventually this bow is probably gonna separate, so I don't wanna do that. For this single desk, I may put in the divider and drive in some screws from the top and the bottom and then fill that little hole with some wood putty. The other ones, I don't think I'll have to do that because they're not bowed like this, but this one I'm gonna have to make a, an exception. When you put two corners like this together that have a veneer on them, it'll kind of flake off and be kind of open-ended. And a really simple trick to get those two pieces of veneer to kind of fuse together, not really fuse, but kind of stick together, is to use a rounded metal object like a screwdriver. You kind of just push it down on the corner. It kind of just runs them together. And once you get them down like that, then you can go over it with a sanding block to make it really smooth. So you can see up here, it actually worked really well and closed it up nicely, but there's a little too much of a gap down here. So for that, we're gonna use some wood filler. The stuff is pink when you put it on, but it ends up looking like wood once it dries. After the glue was dry on the legs, I took them out of the clamps. Before sanding them, I filled some of the holes from the brad nails on the inside with wood filler and then got the legs completely sanded smooth. To mount the legs to the tabletop, I just put some glue on the inside face here and lined up the back edge of the leg with the back edge of the box. That also automatically lines up the top. I used some clamps to hold these two together and then drove in some brad nails from the inside to lock them into position. I thought it was a little bit too much to have the exposed ply on the outside of the box and on the legs. I just wanted it to be a feature in one place. So we covered it up on the box with some edge banding. We're gonna have a bits video coming up really soon talking about that process. It's super simple, but it makes a huge difference. Each one of the desks now has two coats of poly on the top and one coat everywhere else. I'll probably go back and do one more full coat on all the pieces, but right now I need to move on to the drawers. Each one of these is gonna have a single drawer. It's a really super simple construction that I've done many times. The fronts for those drawers are gonna be a callback to a previous project I did, which was a big dresser for all three of my boys in their room. The front of that dresser was made out of solid cherry. I've got a few pieces of that left over, so I'm gonna use that for the drawer fronts for the desks. This video is sponsored by FilterBuy, which is awesome because it's a great service, but they also solved a very specific problem for me in our house. Our furnace filter used to run through this old electrostatic filter and it doesn't work anymore. So I opened it up, pulled out the old filters and went to replace them and realized that this thing is huge and I couldn't find one to match locally. So I went to the filter by website, clicked on custom filters and put in the dimensions that I needed for this specific case. In 24 hours, they made and shipped a filter to me, shipping was free and it fits in here perfectly. Now keeping these filters up to date both makes the air quality in your house better, but it also makes the unit run more efficiently. Unfortunately, I don't ever see this, so I forget to change it a lot. When you subscribe to FilterBuy, you save 5%, but you also don't have to remember the sizes of filters, and they just show up when you need them. So mine show up at the house, and that reminds me that I need to swap them out to keep the unit working well. They have over 600 different sizes of filters, including the custom ones, and they work with furnaces or humidifiers or even air cleaners for your shop. It's a really cool family-owned company based here in the US and these are all made right here as well. They solved a problem for me in doing this and that's really cool. They might be able to do the same for you. So if you want to find out some more information about FilterBuy, hit the link down in the description. Thanks FilterBuy. I've got the drawer boxes finished. They went together really quickly. These are the boards that I'm gonna use for the drawer fronts. Now these are the off cuts from the ones I used on the dresser that I was talking about earlier. So really I just have to cut these down to size and put in the handle. These are already in really good shape. They're just about ready to go. So that the cutouts on these new drawers would match the ones on the dresser, I traced the old ones on a piece of plywood. 
I cut it out with a jigsaw so that I had a template I could use on all three of the drawer faces. I measured and found the center point of this template, and then on each one of the drawer faces, I marked a center point as well. After that, I lined up the center point of my template and my drawer face, and then traced each one of them. This is the same process I used on the dresser, and just like the dresser, I cut these openings out with a jigsaw. These inside boxes are gonna have to be notched out so that you don't see the box from the front once the drawer face is on there. Obviously, if you have normal handles instead of a cutaway, that doesn't matter. I just traced out the opening for the cutaway and then I'm gonna go back with the jigsaw and cut a little extra just so that there's plenty of room because I'm not exactly sure right now where the drawer front's gonna sit vertically. So I'm gonna cut out a little extra space just to make sure it clears it. Each one of these drawer slides comes with instructions. You can just follow them. Josh came up with a clever little way to lay these out though. We're gonna try this. So we've got a spacer underneath the drawer to lift it off the bottom. We've got a different size spacer over here and we're gonna set the outer part of the drawer slide on top of that. So now we can pull the drawer slide out, screw this piece in, and then when you separate these, you can use the spacer again on the inside of the cabinet to place this one. I made the marks on the back of these slides when I had the whole thing in place and so now that I have them off, I'm just lining them up with those marks and I gotta hold it in that position to drive in the screws. I cut the drawer faces a little bit smaller than the opening so that there was an eighth of an inch gap all the way around. To mount this, I laid on some spacers and then set the drawer face on top of those. I clamped it to the inside of the drawer to hold it in place, then pulled it out and drove in some screws from the back side. After that, I covered the entire drawer face with some polyurethane, just like the rest of the desk. And after that dried, it was time to put them in place and surprise the boys with their new desks. I'm super happy with how these things turned out, and they went together really quickly, considering that we had to make three of them at the same time. One of the things that I like most about this design is that you can change a bunch of different things to make it unique for you. You can use a different material for the drawer front, a different type of pull, you can paint the box, you can paint the legs, and make it look very, very different. Now this one was sized for a kid, so it's a little bit short for me, but if you wanted to make it for an adult, you could easily just extend the leg height. The plans that I have available for this, their links down below, are for this size exactly, so if you want to make it for an adult, some small changes will be necessary. I'd love to know how you would customize this to fit your needs, so let me know down in the comments. I've got lots of other project videos of all different types, furniture and props and a bunch of other stuff, so check some of those out. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do that as well. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Hey, I'm Bob, and I like... <laughs> Let's take the wrong breath. Hey, I'm Bob, and I like to make stuff. Today, I'm gonna... <laughs> We're back up here in my boy's bedroom and we've done a bunch of projects up here, up, up in here, up in here, up in here, <laughs> up in here. <laughs>